In this video, we're going to take a look at basic differentiation. Now, we're not really looking at an introduction to differentiation here. We already covered that in differentiation from first principles. So be sure to check that out if you're not too confident with differentiation just yet. But this is more now of practice really for basic differentiation. So nothing too complicated in here. Just really kind of recapping the basic rules for differentiation. Now for this first question here, I've got four parts and we just simply want to differentiate with respect to x. Now let's just recap the rule for differentiation. So if I've got y equals ax to the power of n. Now if I differentiate this, I'm going to get dy by dx as long as we're differentiating y here with respect to x. I get dy by dx. And this is going to be equal. So we bring this n down in front and times it by this coefficient. So it's going to be n times a. We get na. We've then got x. And we reduce the power of x by 1. So it's n minus 1. Okay. So that's our general rule for differentiation. So let's apply that now to these four parts here. Well, for something like this, 12x, so it's a constant and a variable together, and that variable being the variable that we're differentiating with respect to, then this is quite straightforward. All we're simply going to get here is the constant. Okay. So if I differentiate 12x with respect to x, we simply get 12. Okay. Because what's happening here is we've got a power of 1. We bring that 1 down in front, okay, and we times it by 12, which would obviously give me the 12. And then we obviously we reduce this power here, um, x to the 0, which would just be 1. Okay. So in that case, I simply get left with. 12. For part b here, 6x to the power of a half, well again we just apply this rule. So 6 times a half, which would give me 3. So 6 times a half gives me 3. We've then got x to the power of a half minus 1. So a half minus 1 would give me minus a half. So minus a half there, and that's our solution. So 3x to the power of minus a half. For 3x to the 5 here, Again, we're just using this rule here. We then bring this 5 down in front and times by the coefficient. So 5 times 3 gives me 15. So we get 15 here. And then x to the power of 5 minus 1 giving me x to the 4 there. Okay, so we get 15x to the 4. And for part d here, this is where things get a little bit more complicated. And the reason why is because this is an in index form. Okay, when we're differentiating, we want everything in index form. So what I mean by that is we want something like this here where we can go straight into differentiation. We've been in this form here of 1 over x squared. We just need to use some rules of indices to get this in a form that we can differentiate. Now remember, if I've got something like 1 over x squared, this would be the same as x to the minus 2. Okay. So x to the minus 2, we can now differentiate this. So if I differentiate this here, so just so I'm not using sloppy notation. So if I now differentiate this here, um, what I'm going to get then is minus 2 in front. Now, in front of this x here, we don't write it, but there's a 1. So minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. I've then got x. And then again, we subtract 1 from the power. So minus 2 minus 1 gives me minus 3 there. Okay, so we get minus 2 x to the power of minus 3. And if you want to, you can change how we write this. So how this was 1 over x squared. We can now write this in a similar um, fashion. So this would be minus 2 over x cubed. Okay, you can do that if you like. It's not necessary, um, but you might choose to write the result here like this if you, for example, need to find the value of the gradient. Okay, makes it a little bit easier to work with. So that's the solution to the first four parts. There's another four here now on the screen. So these are a little bit more complicated. You know, the numbers might be a little bit more complicated, for example, but nothing too challenging. So if you feel confident enough, pause the video now, have a quick go. But if not, let's take a look together. So if we start with part A here, we want to find dy by dx. So I've got y here is equal to x squared plus 10. And all we're doing now is differentiating here. So again, if y is equal to ax to the power of n, then dy by dx going to be equal to na x to the n minus 1. Okay, so for part a here, if I differentiate this with respect to x to get dy by dx, then what I'm going to get here is 2x because x squared, we bring the 2 down in front, so that's 2 times 1, which is 2x, and then we've got 2 minus 1, my power, so we just get a power of 1 there. So we just simply get 2x for the first term. And we've got a constant here, so plus 10. But remember, if we differentiate a constant, that's just equal to 0. 
Okay, so when you differentiate a constant, it just disappears essentially. So in that case, we get dy by dx is equal to 2x. Now for part b here, again, we just want to find dy by dx. So what am I going to get here? Well, 5x cubed, so that's going to be 5 times 3, which is 15. Then we subtract 1 off the power, so I get 15x squared. 15x squared. And I've now got minus 3x. And remember, when we've got a constant like this and a variable that we're differentiating with respect to, we just get the constant. So I get minus 3 here. Okay, so make sure you take the same sign, minus 3. And there we have it. So that's dy by dx for part b. Part c here, again, just finding dy by dx. Well, the first thing I need to do here is just rewrite this slightly. So we've got 5 over x squared. Well, that's the same as, so if I just write y here, that's the same as 5x to the minus 2. Okay. Plus x minus 4, that's already in the correct form, so we don't need to do anything with that. So plus x minus 4. And now we can differentiate here. So dy by dx. dy by dx. So 5 times minus 2, that would give me minus 10. We get minus 10. And then we've got x to the minus 2, so subtract 1 from the power here. So I'm going to get minus 10x to the minus 3. We've got plus x here, so that would just be simply plus 1, because the constant here in front is a 1, so that's plus 1x, so we just get plus 1. And remember, minus 4 here, we differentiate minus 4 with respect to x, that's just a constant. So when I differentiate that, we just simply get 0, okay? And again, we can write this in a slightly different form. So the better way of writing this would be 1 minus 10 over x cubed there, okay? These are the same, but this is a slightly nicer way of writing this. Uh, and again, this would be easy if you need to find a value for the gradient. Okay, so that's the solution to part C. So that's part A. That's part B. And that is part C. So let's take a look now at part D here, where we've got y equals x cubed minus x to the minus 2. So x cubed here, we bring this 3 down in front, times it by the 1. So I'm going to get dy by dx here, that's going to be 3x squared, so we subtract 1 from the power of 3 here, so we get 3x squared. Now take care here, so this is minus x to the minus 2. So what I'm doing here is minus 1 times minus 2, so now we get a positive, so we get plus 2 here. We get plus 2. I've got x to the minus 2, so when I subtract 1 from the power here, we're going to get 2x to the minus 3 there. Okay, so just do take care with the signs here. Very easy to make a mistake. So like we said, this is minus 1 times now this power. So minus 1 times minus 2, we get positive 2. Okay, and then just subtract 1 from your power. And that's what we get there. Okay, and that's the solution to part D. Now let's take a look when we have stuff like brackets involved. So again, just another point of notation here. Now we're using f of x notation, so our function notation here. So if I've got my function f of x, then once we differentiate, we get f prime of x. So this little dash here, we call that prime, so f prime of x. And again, the rule is still the same. So if I've got f of x is equal to, say, ax to the power of n, so ax to the power of n, then f prime of x is going to be na x to the n minus 1. Okay, so that's our differentiated form. All we need to do now is apply that to pi a and pi b. But what do we do here when we have stuff like brackets involved? Well, again, like we said before, when we had um, stuff like 1 over x squared, what I need to do is I need to rewrite this so it's in a form that we can easily differentiate. Now, what you'll learn later on in the course is a way to differentiate stuff like a product, okay, using what we call the product rule. But for now, we don't need that. What we're going to do is just take a look at the, the longer way of doing it, um, but just so we can explain this in the most basic terms. If I've got a bracket like this, what would make sense here is just to expand this bracket and this term on the outside. So this is the same as x squared. So just expand in here. x times x, we get x squared. x times 5, we get plus 5x. Okay. And what I want to do now is I want to differentiate here. So for part a, f prime of x. So differentiating term by term here. So x squared, that will differentiate to 2x. And plus 5x here, again, this is just a constant, a variable that we're differentiating with respect to, so it will be plus 
5 there. Okay, so for part A, for f prime of x, we get 2x plus 5. For part B, then, I've got f of x is equal to the product of these two brackets. And again, we could use a product rule if you are familiar with that, but I don't want to introduce that in this video. What I want to do is just show you how we'd expand, um, or how we differentiate something like this by just expanding. So all I'm going to do is expand these double brackets. So that's going to be equal to x squared, x squared. I'm going to get 4x here minus 1x, that's plus 3x, plus 3x, and then minus 1 times 4, giving me minus 4. Okay. So what do we do next? Well, again, we just differentiate here, term by term. So f prime of x here for part b, f prime of x. Well, x squared, that will differentiate to give us 2x. We've already seen that here. Plus 3x, well, that will simply give me plus 3. And minus 4 here, again, if we differentiate a constant with respect to x, that will just be 0. Okay, so for part b, for f prime of x, we get 2x plus 3 there. So let's take a look now when we introduce um, the concept of finding the gradient through differentiation. So what I've got here is y. So y is equal to this quadratic, x squared minus 6x minus 1. Now, a quadratic is a parabola. So what we're saying here is the gradient changes depending on the value of x. If we think about this here, to have a quick sketch, say this is my quadratic. Okay, pretty awful sketch, but just so we can see here, and clearly the value of the gradient changes depending on the value of x. Whereas for a straight line, you can do this on a different set of axes here, then the gradient remains constant, okay? So this is where differentiation becomes really useful. So first, let's just start by finding dy by dx. So again, just go term by term here. So I'm gonna get two x, and then if I differentiate minus 6x here with respect to x, I'm going to get minus 6. Okay, so we get 2x minus 6. So now for part b, what we want to do then is find the gradient of the curve when x is equal to 4. So dy by dx allows us to find the gradient of that curve by just simply substituting in values of x. So when x is 4, all we do then is substitute x equals 4 into dy by dx. Okay, so therefore, when x is equal to 4, the gradient will be 2 lots of 4 minus 6. Okay, so 2 times 4 is 8. We get 8 minus 6, giving us 2 there. Okay, so the gradient of the curve when x is equal to 4 is equal to 2. And let's take a look at one more question here to finish. Again, just taking a look now at the gradient. So y is equal to, again, this quadratic, 2x squared plus 10x minus 5. We want to find the value of x for which the gradient here, dy by dx, is equal to 2. So pretty similar to the last one, the first thing we need to do then is start by finding dy by dx. So dy by dx, again, we just go term by term here. 2x squared, so that's going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. Reduce the power by 1, so I get 4x. And then plus 10x, that would be just simply plus 10. So for dy by dx, we get 4x plus 10. But what we're asked to do here is find the value of x for which this expression is equal to 2. So what I need to do now is set 4x plus 10 equal to 2. So 4x plus 10 is equal to 2. And all we need to do now is solve this linear equation. So 4x is equal to 2 minus 10, giving me minus 8. Now we, did, now we divide both sides by this coefficient here of x4. So x is equal to minus 8. That's minus 8 over 4, which gives me minus 2 there. Okay. So the value of x for which dy by dx is equal to 2 is minus 2. Okay. And obviously we could then find the value, the value of y by substituting x equals minus 2 into our expression for y here. Okay. Now we don't need to do that, but just in case you're asked, that's how we do that as well. And there we have it. So that brings us to the end of this video on basic differentiation. In the next video, we're going to take a look at finding the equation of a tangent to a curve and the equation of a normal to a curve.